And welcome to On Point with Ellen Whippy Knight, where we talk to successful women and men of Fiji wherever they may be. This evening, I'm joined by Felicia Hazelman Tuiloma, the Marketing and Corporate Affairs Manager at Coca Cola Amatel, Fiji Limited. And hello again, Felicia. Hi, How are Ellen. you? Hi, hi, I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're very, very welcome. Very welcome. I would like to talk to you about your career and your job um, and how you've risen to where you are today. It's part of a, a series that I'm doing of successful women and, and you're part of that because there seems to be a growing number and a high percentage of women that are coming through the ranks at a very early young age um, and taking up executive positions that did not exist for women in the past and secondly, definitely not at the age that you know that you've um, achieved your position at this stage. And, and you have a very interesting story because I remember when you were in Sydney uh, two weeks ago, we talked about uh, you know what you did with your life and, and how you got there with the support of your parents. And I just think for a normal, you know, part European family, we're normally very, very um, free and easy, uh, and not sort of seen to be such huge achievers in the corporate world, this has been an amazing move. So you started work with, as an audiovisual officer with Addison Wilson. Wilson Addison. Wilson Addison. Yes. In, what uh, year was that? Oh, 1995, many years ago. Um, so I, I really believe that it just goes back to the home. So mm -hmm. for me, I had a very good uh, foundation uh, in my parents, my mother's, um, very much into education and uh, driving qualifications and dad's very practical mm -hmm. and very hardworking. So I, I felt they were, they were a very good combination and um, he always drove us to always be committed to what you do and always show up. Like mm -hmm. if you say you're going to be there, be there. Mm -hmm. Don't let people down, always uh, be on time and do your best. Mm -hmm. So and, and, and it, they've always and in most families, well our family, they're very quick to give you advice every step of the way and not, you know, every time you falter or something goes wrong, they're quick to say, no, you should have done it this way. Maybe you, what if you thought of doing it this way? So it was always uh, guided um, throughout the way. And for my job at uh, Wilson Addison, dad actually um, knew one of the managers at the time and I just started off doing a holiday job. It was a three week stint. And when I decided to go and start uni, because I'd already applied to get in and I was going to do tourism, um, they offered me a full-time role and I was shocked. I thought, okay. How old were you? I was 17. Wow. And because when I got in, I was really in awe with the industry and what they did and the different things you got involved in. So I thought, you know what, I think this is my calling. This is what I want to do. Um, and the fact that they offered me a role at such a young age, I thought, I've got a choice here. Do I want to go to school? Or and then the fact that I was earning money at that age, it's something. You know, you sort and of pay your own in those days, yes. when I mean, I remember that vividly. In those days, when money was very hard to come by, and we certainly didn't line up in front of Gloria Jeans buying coffees at four dollars fifty or six fifty or exactly. juices. Yes. So that in itself was an achievement. But now you are the um, marketing and corporate affairs manager at a global company, like one of the biggest companies in the world, Coca-Cola, Amatil. So how did you get there? So I've always set goals for myself, um, very big on sort of achieving things and just being realistic. So I also worked at ANZ. Um, yes, you were there for a number of years, yeah, weren't you? It's about and, four and also years, in marketing. Also in marketing as well. As so, well. It's so it seems that you've stayed on that, stayed in that lane. Yes. Um, since your and it was uh, always medicine. a natural progression. Like I didn't try and aim for something that was beyond my capacity. I always made sure that it was a realistic goal. Um, and I gave myself time frames and things that I wanted to do. Now, um, that leads me back to my next point, the London trip. So London was a dream I had when I was Let me nine. just talk about that okay. in a minute. Because um, you, you also did something that was unusual mm. for people of the day. Um, and, I, and I'm saying part European, not to be um, 
racial or anything, but because it just wasn't the done thing in those days, mm. you know, and, and a lot of our parents at the time were not in executive positions or management positions, um, but neither were we poor. But then what happened was you um, went to university. Yes. You finished your degree. I didn't actually. Okay. Well, you went to university and then you decided to go and do what most Australian kids do, what a lot of other uh, children, uh, students in, in England do, Switzerland, name it, um, and they go traveling. And yeah, you did correct. that I for did that. three years. Three and a half years. Three yes. and a half years. Yeah. So, yeah. So Why? It, well, something actually drove me to it. I, um, so I worked in the industry of advertising and media and marketing for about four and a half years. Then I um, got approached to work for Islands Business in sales. So I thought I'd try the other side. I did that. Sales is just not my forte. I did it for two years and I stuck it out because dad was like, no, you've committed to this. You make sure you see it till the end. So I was like, okay, I'll just take it as a way of sort of building my skills. But that motiva motivated me to look for something else and something further. And I thought, at the time I was 23 and I thought, I'm not committed to anything or anyone. This is a time to do the traveling. So through a friend of mine, she had actually applied and done it. So she came and talked to us about it. So I thought, okay, I'll give it a shot. I went and applied and I got it within three days. To so, go to Europe? Yeah, and I didn't even talk to my parents about it. So then I set them down and I said, I'm going to London. And my dad was like, what? How did you come up? So I said, well, I've thought about it. Um, I'm really not happy doing sales. I've always wanted to travel and I'm going to do it. So I had set a date and I think it was July 9th, uh, 1999, I flew out. And uh, Was that your first time out of Fiji? No, I had done some traveling right. before. Oh, okay. But first time so far away, yes. Right. And, and then you got to London, you got yourself a job and, got, you did so, and you worked in some really interesting places. Yes. Yeah, so when I got to London, um, it's good because this friend of ours, she advised us along the way. She said, you need to get your social security number. You need to sign up with a job agency, try and find uh, work within the area that we live in. So she had already set us up and talked to us through it. So it took me about three weeks to find a job. And um, I worked in various legal firms. I didn't want to do, I think by the time I left, I was a bit burnt out. So I wanted to do something that was just not stressful, just administration, clerical work. Well, you must have done something absolutely right because I do remember that you said that you also won the um, temp, temp Award of the Year. And I've worked in the recruitment industry and I know how hard mm. it is to find the Temp of the Year because there's so many of them because I actually had my own recruitment company in Sydney. So let's talk about that when we come back. You're on point with Ellen Whippy Knight and we're talking here with Felicia Tuiloma Hazelman and we will see what more she has to say about her time and trip that, that really truly merged into what she does now and made her what she is today. Welcome back to On Point with Ellen Whippy Knight and sitting with me in the studio this afternoon is Felicia Hazelman Tuiloma and we're just talking about this amazing journey that this lady started as a young person and at the moment we're up to the point where she wins Temper of the Year in London during her three and a half year stay in Europe. So Felicia, as I said earlier on, you know, um, having worked in the recruitment industry myself and run my own company there, I know how difficult it is to become the temp of the year because there's so many temps, and particularly in London, because you would have been surrounded by Australians and New Zealanders mm -hmm. who make up most of those, that batch. Uh, how, how did you get that, that award? I think I was just really excited with uh, the experience of being in London and I was very uh, motivated and driven so anything that I was given or any task I was sent out to do I did it with a lot of effort and I, I gave my time like I, I noticed with uh, uh, people in London, they work exactly according to their job dis description. Oh, I've I got plenty of stories yes. about that. Yes. So I would do other things. I would offer to help other departments, other team members, and they'd be like, why are you doing it? That's not within your job description. But I thought, no, I, I've done everything I need to do. There's other thing I'd like to get keep myself busy. So I think they like that. And I got a lot of callbacks from the people that I worked with. And there were legal for, uh, firms, um, social services, even the government, Department of Health. Um, so I was exposed to a, little, a lot of different fields, 
which is really interesting. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, um, that that story t touches a nerve with me, um, a, a good nerve, because when I first went to Sydney, I was actually doing a lot of temp work until I could find what I really loved, and I did the same thing as you. And I think it's just a Fijian thing, you yes, know, where we're always wanting so. to help other people. And um, in those days, you could actually take your knitting to work and sit and read your book once your own task or mm. your job description whatever you had to do in your job description was done. And I would go around and say, oh, can I do this and do that? And I can remember one day when I was so burdened with so much work and there was deadlines, and this is in an architectural firm, and then I thought I'd go and ask this lady called Adele. I said, Adele, could you please, and she was sitting there reading her book. And when I went and asked her, she quickly picked up and started typing to look really busy. And I thought, right, Chikul Sarikeri, I'm not going to be offering my help in, again. But you didn't win that um, temp award once, you won it twice. I won it twice in two different barrels. So the first one in uh, London Bar of London Bridge, and the other one was in Lambeth, right. South London. Yeah, right. so central London and south London. Right. And then you tempt, and you came to work with a, some really great organisations. How do you think that that work experience? Because after that you came back to Fiji. I'm surprised you did come back to Fiji. But um, how did that experience help you do your next job? It really matured me. Um, and then I got used to um, working with so many different types of people because we had people from Jamaica, um, Nigeria, a lot of Australians, New Zealanders, people from the US. So you get exposed to a lot of different um, cultures as well as different attitudes and styles of working. Um, I remember like going back to your point. I would finish my work really quickly and then I'd say, oh, I'm done. What else could I do? And they'd be like, can you just stretch your work because we want to keep you here longer? Yes. You keep finishing fast. We don't have anything to stretch yes. through the months. Yes. So that really surprised me. But I thought, oh, well, I'm just not a slow paced yeah. worker. I'm always eager yes. to finish up my then tasks. Then you came back to Fiji um, and you had a long stint with, uh, well, you, you were headhunted actually to come and work for uh, Saatchi and Saatchi? MNC Saatchi. MNC Saatchi, Saatchi sorry. Yes. So what was the situation there and why were you headhunted? So I had worked with the company before. So the contacts, um, so the people that worked at uh, MNC Saatchi were actually at Wilson Addison. So when Wilson Addison had closed down, we started up um, AdWorks at the time. Oh, right, yes. And then yes. I left after a year. Right. So when they heard I was coming back, they offered me a role there, which right. I thought, okay, this, you know, because I was actually thinking of coming back. I'm, uh, I really wanted to come back because I, I heard a lot of people had been leaving, qualified people, hardworking people, and I just wanted to come back and build this nation. I wanted to come back to Fiji and give back mm. everything that I'd learned and mm. experienced. Mm. So my plan was just to move back. Yeah, and, there was, and a, this drain, was just, a brain drain yes. at that particular time. So I thought this is a really uh, good sign right. for me, and I took right. the... And then yeah. you f went on from there, then you went on to ANZ. I went on to ANZ. Um, that was a, that, your time at ANZ is a very important time for... Very much. It was very much a launching pad for, the career, for your career and at where you are actually now, isn't it? Yes. Or wasn't so it? We, there was also a leadership program which they started in ANZ. I forget the name of it, but I was chosen to be on that leadership program. And we also had uh, things like um, financial literacy. So I volunteered to, to get onto that financial literacy program because I used to travel um, Loma Viti Group and do our marketing and branding when we go with Reserve Bank and that. So I thought, you know what, instead of sending two people, a marketing and a facilitator, maybe I could train to be a facilitator so I could do both when we did those trips. Right. So I went and I learned it and then we had to go and teach uh, people in the rural areas on financial literacy as well. So one of the things that I learned there was um, focusing on smart goals, you know, right. being very specific about what you want, make, make sure that it's measured, so ensure that you know that from here to next year, this is my plan. Um, making sure that it is, it's accessible, not thinking that you're a marketing officer and okay, by next year I want to be a chief executive officer. Right. And that's not being realistic. So being realistic and making sure it's time. Give yourself the time to know these are the things that you need to do, train, um, learn and experience before to, you get to that point. And it right. all also goes with people nowadays, I find they're very impatient to get those managerial roles. But it comes with a lot of responsibilities. It certainly does. I mean, I know how you've worked. I've worked with you for a number of years now. Yeah. Um, you know, in your role at Coca-Cola. Um, so why did you then leave ANZ? You had, you know, it's that it formulated a, um, you know, this this package that you suddenly had, not yes. suddenly worked at. 
that, that was marketable. Um, I think uh, you also need to be very aware of um, where you are in the structure of the in, of the business. Right. So I felt that there wasn't going to be any movement for me, and I needed a change. I felt you didn't want to be CEO of ANZ. Uh, not particularly, <laughs> no. So I, while I liked banking, I found marketing um, in ANZ is more to do with events right. and sponsorships rather than um, marketing at Coca Cola, right. which is everything. Yes. Um, so. I, I really wanted a change. I was getting a bit apprehensive about kind of doing the same thing. I'd done the golf event for the third year in a row, right. then we're doing the Diwali cocktail. Right. While it was all nice, I was kind of getting a little bit bored, so right. I needed a change. Right. And uh, then Digicel gave me a call one day out of the blue, and they had offered me um, corporate services manager. I believe that the, the title, title was. was yes. And but you um, didn't stay there for very long. I didn't um, stay there for very you went long. Went on to because you got another call after the first month. I got a call from Coca Cola uh, for the marketing activations role. Yes, and, and that I, was a really great role for you because yes. that really helped suited your me. Yes. suited what you were about and what you wanted to do. So we'll come back, and and we'll talk about this particular role because that's how I got to know more about you. Um, and, and our, how our collaborations have worked. So you've been watching On Point with Ellen Whippy Knight and with Felicia Hazelman Tuloma, and we'll be back again straight after this, so don't go away. And just as we said, we've come right back to On Point with Ellen Whippy Knight and with Felicia Tuiloma, and we're talking about her career. And for me, I think this is so interesting for young women to be listening to because what Felicia's done and her journey is not impossible. Basically, what she's saying, she got through through being very passionate and knowing what her vision is and where she wanted to go with it. So, Felicia. I met you, um, at, you know, through Fiji Fashion Week, and you were working at Coca-Cola at the time. And I have to say one thing, that when I first saw you, I thought, mm, um, she looks very serious, <laughs> and I better put on my serious <laughs> mode because of your eyebrows <laughs> and the shape that it went to when I introduced myself. And then, you know, after a number of visits, I think you saw what I was about and what I'd come to see you about. And what I saw in you was exactly what you talk about is this vision you were really driven you knew exactly what you could do for fiji fashion week and you also gave me some advice so much so that when we met up in sydney a couple of weeks ago i said to felicia i feel like i'm the one that's younger than you and that <laughs> you're my mentor because i just love listening to your advice but now here you are you're the marketing corporate affairs manager at coca-cola as i said you know one of the biggest brands in the world and you're doing very very well there you. you were in sydney for a particular conference do you want to talk about that because i believe that coca-cola is really one of the leaders in that area Yes, yeah, so I'm the fourth recipient of this program. It's called the David Gonski Women Leading at Amatol. Mm -hmm. um, and so it actually goes through, uh, they do proper applications and it goes to uh, the board of uh, Coca-Cola Amatol. So our managing director, Asia Pacific, um, CFO, Asia Pacific, they sit in and they go through our applications. So Coca-Cola Amatol Fiji actually sent the application for me and it, we get chosen. So there were 22 of us chosen and we actually have career coaches. So right. um, it's, a one, it's a one and a half day training session and they go through strengths, they go through how to approach difficult situations, um, things that you need to work on. And what I really like about this program is they don't talk about the things that you need to develop. They said you should just focus on your strengths. Right. Focus on what you're good at and really do it really well. Because that will you, outdo the weaknesses. Yes. And then um, and they teach you how to flex to different situations. So depending yes. on what your strengths are, so I did my strength test, and my five strengths are responsibility is number one. Uh, number two is uh, input. So I like to absorb a lot of information and use it. Um, the third one is developer. I like working with young people and developing them and growing them in the field. Um, the, th the fourth one is futuristic. I always think ahead and plan things in advance, so setting mm. goals and that comes into play. And the last one is strategic. 
Yes. So my decision making, I'm always ensuring that it's quite strategic. I think it th through how does it affect different scenarios, etc. So using that, what they've said is you always put it in front of you, and then you think of how you use that in different situations and how you approach different audiences. Has it been a great platform for you to use? Absolutely. And do you think that you would have survived um, not if you had not learned this? Well, not, you already had the skills, but using them as your strength. Yeah, and using them appropriately. Um, right. And having the confidence to use mm. them, knowing when, in what situations mm. you need them. Like, not, it's, it's no point knowing your strengths and not doing anything with right. it. So yes. it's always picking up. So when you go into a meeting, always find out who you're meeting with, and you find out more about the person. So that when you go in, you already know what kind of approach. Yes. Yes. So uh, with our general manager, when I go in with him, I take my strategic strength with right, me and right. input because he's kind of like my organic um, mentor. Right. So he doesn't know it yet, but he, your mentor is someone that'll tell you the truth, right. not what you want to hear. Yes. Oh, that's nice. And yes. yeah, you've done that really well. Someone that'll tell you, no, Felicia, you haven't done it. I mm. don't think that's a way to do it. Have you thought of doing it this way? Seems like you've had, you've got a very good relationship in, in your, um, with your executive team. And, and, I, and I love the way that you look at it, th things and apply yourself to it. What are the challenges in such a job? Um, well, in our business, it's majority um, of the staff in Coca-Cola, Amatol, Fiji are male. So ah. you have a lot of strong personalities. And Well, I don't think you're a shrinking violet yourself, darling. Well, you know, in the beginning, I yes. found it uh, quite challenging. But I had to kind of build the relationships with them because right. I'm a newbie coming into the business. A lot of them have been there 20 something years, 30 years. Right. So for you to come in and step in their territory, you kind of need to sort of pave the way and come yes. in slowly. Try not to be, you know, step overstep the mark. And yes. Yes. so that's very important, uh, building, building your relationships at the outset. And then it makes for working together so Absolutely much easier. Absolutely correct. Yeah. Yeah. Without putting the horns on and charging like a bull. Yes. And except, expecting people to change ar yes. around you. What do you think has been one of the biggest highlights in your working life? Biggest highlights? Um, achieving the goals that I've set out for myself. Mm. I mean, it, even right down to my personal life. Um, I knew exactly when I wanted to get married at what age. Um, yes, because you didn't get married like a lot of people did at until I got to 35. Yeah, exactly. So I wanted to make sure that my career was set straight after marriage. I decided I wanted a house. Three months later, I got a house. So very focused and specific. Very high achiever. Yeah, I try my best. I try my so best. So when you think about all of these things and the journey, this very successful journey that you've taken, um, how much of that now to this point do you put back to the way your parents brought you up? Uh, a lot of it. I mean, um, a lot of along the way. I've got a lot of. I've gotten a lot of encouragement, especially from my dad. Right. So he always made us believe that we could achieve great things. I see. I find that really amazing. Yeah. You know, a good savu savu boy mm. talking to his children. You know, with such vision like that. Because you also have um, all your brothers are, are really high achievers as well. You've so got we have some two lawyers, doctors two in the family. Uh, one is a, a medical doctor, and the other is a doctor of philosoph philosophy. Yeah, do that's right, doctor of philosophy. And so, at the end of the day, here you are at uh, at Coca Cola, the big one of the biggest companies in the world. And what do you think is your next step with them, or with anything? It, it, you know, just in general. Well, I've. This role I've come in, it's been a year within this role and there's a few things that I still want to develop. I've given myself another two to three years. Right. Um, I'd love to stay within the business because I think it's, it's really good. They, they spoil us at right. uh, Amatol and they look after the staff really well. I mean, any company Pretty should. Good. So you're obviously very well prepared mm. and you've certainly got a plan set aside you know, ahead of you there of where you're going to go. And that, but in the meantime though, um, what I think is really has been really fabulous for you is this opportunity that you've had with Coca-Cola and where it can take you know you next to because uh, certainly somebody that really appreciates your time there and not only because you were there uh, pr previously as well um, as our relationship Fiji Fashion Week with you know and I'm not sitting here for Fiji Fashion but I want to mention it um, with Coca-Cola because it's been a fabulous relationship and so so F Felicia at the end of the day I think what we need to say is that there's a lot of people like you and I hope that one day you will have a group of young women, local women, that you can mentor because you've come this way so far 
very quickly in actual fact considering mm -hmm. what your age is now mm -hmm. um, and it has been it will be a total benefit for you know younger women in, in, this, in our community mm -hmm. so any last words um, our, my advice to young people is just to stay focused be committed and try and cut away all the clutter and distractions um, and put those mobile phones away exactly and then always focus on what's in front of you set goals work towards it thank you now, I hope you all heard that, particularly for your young viewers. It is very valuable information. It's the kind of information that will take you forward. So you've been on point with Ellen Whippy Knight. We hope you enjoyed the show and the insights provided by Felicia. And so don't forget to come back and join us again next week where we'll talk to another successful woman right here on MyTV. TV.